You know, just got done fishing. It is another week. We are at Thorn Brothers here in Blaine, Minnesota, stopping out after a guide trip to get some much needed gear. We lost some jigs to some pike. Uh, we need some more plastics. We need some odds and ends. It's a great place to swing in and get everything you need for a day of fishing. It is now Sunday afternoon. We are into the full first full week of July. It is pretty wild here in the Twin Cities. For the first time, I think in a while, we saw warm weather without wind. We had some sun, it felt great. Low humidity, it was awesome. Fish are really starting to do what they should be doing in their summer patterns, which is wonderful. And we're getting after them. I love this time of year because conditions are consistent. We have stable, stable patterns. The fish are in their summer situations. They're schooling up. We can find a lot of bass on one spot, especially when I'm taking multiple people fishing. As a fishing guide, it's super nice because I can have them on top of a schooling batch of biting fish. Now, I say that, but we've had a couple days here where the fish have been real sluggish. The fish are in the right spots. They're just really slow on what they're doing. So we've had to really, really, really slow down to get these fish to bite. So we've turned to slower presentations, heavier presentations, just like we talked about in recent weeks, we've targeted bass and walleyes on heavier Ned rigs. We switched to some heavier jig worms. The all-terrain tackle Mighty Jig Head has been getting to work out the last couple days. It's a longer profile jig head than let's say your Ned head. So it's not even a traditional Ned head, it's a jig worm. And we've seen this situation in the Twin Cities when we're talking Lake Minnetonka, Lake Waconia, Chisago Chain, Annandale area, South Metro, North Metro, that these fish want two distinct patterns. They want to either feed down or they want to feed up. And my feed down presentation is my Ned Rig. My feed up presentation is the Jig Worm or a drop shot. The Jig Worm's gonna fall slower. I'm gonna entice these fish to bite on the fall. The drop shot, I'm gonna have some level of distance between the bottom and my presentation where fish can feed on or feed up. Where a Ned Rig, I am making contact with that bottom the entire time. We have seen a little bit of a transition on the bass side of things, where the jig worm has caught more fish, where these fish are ambushing this presentation on the fall through the weeds, or they're coming up to take this bait. That's where the jig worm tends to be key. So you have two situations. I have, if I have three clients in the boat, I have six rigs set up. I have three Ned rigs and I have three jig worms. Brody, the man behind the camera, you're probably fishing the drop shot, aren't you? Margarita mutilator? Yep. Is that the one? Yep. On a drop shot? Cylinder weight drop shot. So those are some presentations that are catching fish. So we have switched from a Ned Rig to a Jig Worm or Jig Worm to a Ned Rig. Those are the ways we're getting bit. Easiest way to catch fish in the Twin Cities right now. Spinning rod set up, 15 or 20 pound braided line to an eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon leader and away you go. Now the weight of the jig head can vary on the depth. I'm oftentimes airing on a side of heavy because I'm using situations in 20 to 25 feet of water. We probably have a little bit of wind. I may have some clientele in the boat that aren't as used to feeling the bite, or they might just be fan casting around, baits are drifting. I wanna make sure that presentation is in that bottom third of the water column. So I'm fishing a one fifth or one sixth ounce net head. We're fishing a quarter ounce uh, mighty head we're fishing heavier presentations to get bit so those are our situations of how we're catching fish now a lot of the fish right now like you said are grouped up they're schooled up they're on outside weed lines they're in the coontail if you pan around with even 2d sonar you don't need the fancy side imaging you don't need forward facing sonar i've had a few anglers come at me in the last week saying i don't have that kind of stuff how can i find this Look at your GPS, look for weed lines, look for big turns and underwater points on the weed lines. Look at your 2D sonar. Are you seeing the weeds down there? Kind of scan around in 20, 25 feet of water and look for two, three, four foot tall weeds. That's what the bass or walleyes are hiding in. And if you see some weeds that are even taller and sparse on some of those weed lines, transition areas, inside turns, that can be good spots for walleyes and bass as well. Now, if you have side imaging, it's even easier to find these weed beds. If you have forward facing sonar, even easier yet. So if you have some of these tools, use them. I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna sit there and get into a debate over forward facing sonar. These are tools that can help us catch fish. 
use them appropriately, use them responsibly, and you can use them to your advantage to have a better day on the water or on the ice. So those are spots that these fish are holding in on. 20 to 25 feet has been key for our schooling bass. The walleyes have still been in eight to 15 feet. They seem to still be really hugging those weeds and that's what we're getting bit at. So that's where we're finding our fish. Water temps are in the mid 70s, 74 to 78 degrees. I have not seen much for 80 degree water temperature yet. Not yet anyway. If you look at the forecast this coming week, we're gonna be in the mid 80s. We have a little bit of chance of rain every day. It seems to be evening hours, the daytime. Right now we're in the afternoon on Sunday. It's beautiful outside. We should honestly still be on the water, but we're here at Thorn Brothers hanging out. We gotta go pick up big brother Benny, right Brody? Benny's coming home from a week at the cabin with the in-laws. He cracked a whole bunch of big fish. Shout out to Ben. Caught a six pound PB largemouth. That was awesome. It's always cool when you're sitting at home and you get a text or you get FaceTime from your son holding up his personal best largemouth bass at 21 and three quarter inches. That is an absolute donkey. Congratulations, Ben. I saw a lot of people on Facebook this week showing off some PB fish. Drew Pingle got his PB. Bluegill today, I believe. 10 and a half inch, one pound beast. A lot of good fish happening. So rule of thumb today and this week, it's gonna be fun. The fish are schooling up. We have summertime patterns. If you have to fish and you can only pick a window of time, sunrise, sunset definitely seems to be key. We have seen a slowdown on the pattern from 10 to four o'clock. It's just a tougher bite window. It is what it is this time of year. It's gonna be like that for July and August and part of September. Prime time is gonna be your first few hours of light and your last few hours of light. So. That's what I know. Get out there, chase down some fish. The pike are all over the place. They're easy to catch. Guys are trolling DT10 crankbaits on weed lines and catching plenty of northern pike. Uh, musky guys are chucking baits. I don't have a really, really solid musky report. But from a bass perspective, a walleye perspective, a panfish perspective, the fish are biting, right? What do you think, bro? Do you mean to go into Thorn Brothers and get some stuff? Yeah. All right, well, we'll come back at you in a week. Go out there, have some fun. Hopefully, you had a great July 4th yeah. holiday. Hopefully you were safe and sound. Hopefully you ate some good food, spent some time with family, had a whole lot of fun, and go out there this next week of July. Continue to be safe, continue to drink water, continue to wear your Blackfish Sun shirt to stay comfortable and out of the elements, and have fun sets of books for me, and we'll see you next week.